Thanks for tuning in as we end another year of conversations with fascinating and informative guests who share their perspectives on personal well-being and empowerment. Today, we spend one third of our lives doing it. Sleep, that is. And our guest this week is noted sleep and recovery expert, Vitalius Mayorvis. He's the CEO and co-founder of Pulsetto and the inventor of a wearable neuromodulation device to improve sleep quality and reduce stress and anxiety. He's also known as a sleep biohacker, certified sleep and recovery coach, and certified Butekao method breathing instructor, who spent more than 10 years in the sleep products industry. Vitalius also writes about and has been interviewed about sleep for various publications. Vitalius Mayorvis, welcome to Next Steps Forward. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Chris. Vitalius, I especially appreciate you joining us because you're in Vilnius, Lithuania, which means it's seven hours ahead of us here in the Eastern time of the United States. For those in our audience who may not know much about your country, would you give us a quick Lithuania 101 lesson, please? Yeah, it's a small Baltic country. Baltic, unfortunately, is near Russia at this at this moment. Uh, so it's like a three million people population country, you know, so it's very small. Uh, but a very innovative country and a very beautiful country. At this moment, we have winter, uh, not so strong winter, let's say minus three, minus four degrees. Uh, yeah, and uh, we are completely Western guys you now, so we have all this Western mentality uh, and we've been 50 years o- o- occupied by Russia. So, you know, <laughs> we, are, we are completely all in in Western culture. We like to be, you know, I have a lot of firsts here on the show of Next Steps Forward. This is the first time we've had somebody from Lithuania. So again, I know it's late in the holiday season, so appreciate your time. Nice, nice, yeah. Your father was a renowned chess champion in Lithuania and was even the head coach of the United Arab Emirates national chess team. Tell us about your family and how you grew up. Yeah, he was very, very famous, uh, locally very famous chess player. Uh, he was a grandmaster, uh, one of the best in Lithuania. And then somehow he decided to quit his uh, chess career and then he moved to to, to coaching. You know? uh, he became, uh, he, he participated in several, let's say, uh, coaching events in different countries, France and etc. And then he spent uh, five years in the United Arab Emirates, uh, where the chess is, at, at that moment, it was quite popular, let's say, sport. And he was the main um, coach of the national chess team. Uh, unfortunately, he died in 1997 uh, due to brain cancer. Uh, so when I was um, 11, 12 years old. Uh, so, yeah, but we spent quite also quite an interesting time because uh, half of the year we spent also in, in United Arab Emirates, five years in a row. So uh, during my school time, you know, I had experience to... to learn lessons from my mother <laughs> and then come back and the rest uh, half of the year, you know, try to catch up with the, all, all other, uh, let's say, my colleagues in school. So yeah, it was interesting, uh, in- interesting, let's say, childhood uh, for me in the different countries. And that's why, you know, I believe, uh, I, I, you know, I am also kind of, let's say, my mentality is also open, you know, open-minded, uh, liberal, you know, person, you know, and see world as a global, you know, space where, you know, location is just uh, in your mind, you know. <laughs> so, like yeah. That. So I know that you had two motivations for entering the field of sleep restoration in the brain. And the first is that your wife has a very specific condition called cluster head pain that's much worse than a migraine. For people who yeah. suffer from migraines, I'm sure they empathize with her and they might even be surprised that there's a pain worse than a migraine. How rare or common is cluster head pain and does it develop in childhood or later in life? It's very rare. It's 0.1 percentage uh, population, very rare. But still, the 0.1 percentage is millions of people. So uh, even today, I spoke with one, uh, one of our customers. She, she has cluster head pains. It's a terrible condition, basically. Uh, in some cases, like a 10 times bigger pain than migraine. Uh, basically it's uh, still science don't understand why it's happening. Uh, there are some reasons of uh, in, in the brain, in hypothalamus, 
uh, but basically, you know, the, the pain is in the face area because uh, the nerves are in spasm, in very big spasm. And those uh, cluster head pain, uh, let's say, uh, episodes, uh, fortunately, uh, they are not so often, uh, but let's say once or two, yeah, two times per year, it can happen for let's say a couple of uh, couple of weeks in a row and usually it's, it it this pain is uh, uh, in the, at night so you know people with this pain you know they are waking up in the middle of the night and they feel that something like knife is going on their face and and, uh, and they cannot do nothing you know so um basically there are not so many treatment uh, at, at this moment uh, and yeah it's a quite quite uh, terrible and rare condition have researchers determined the cause of cluster head pain or where it originates in the brain? Yeah, so, or, you know, or genetic reasons, let's say, or the, the, the problem with hypothalamus. Also, uh, people who are smoking and who are consuming alcohol, they have more uh, probability of this. But usually it's, uh, it's uh, in a lot of cases, it's not only related with smoking and alcohol. Maybe it can be even genetic, let's say, a factor. Uh, but still, science don't understand the real let's say, reason why this uh, pain, let's say, happens and, 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 and why some people have this pain. And what treatments are available for cluster head pain? Not so many. The most popular is oxygen uh, therapy. Uh, there are some nasal sprays, let's say, or there are some oxygens, masks, uh, and, and etc. But um, from my personal experience, because my wife had this oxygen, uh, let's say, uh, solution, they are not always working. Or they're working, let's say, for I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. But if the pain repeats during the same night, you know, they will not, you know, help uh, uh, anymore, you know. So, so um, yeah, there are some publications about vagus nerve stimulation, and this was one of my motivation why I created Pulsepa. Uh, there, there, there is even one device in the market uh, which has FDA approval for migraine and cluster head pain treatment. It means that uh, they are claiming that they are decreasing the amount of pain. So uh, the vagus nerve stimulation is quite interesting topic, but for sure, uh, one more time, it's not all, always working. It, it can decrease the pain level and etc but yeah even we have several customers like i said uh, one customer wrote uh, today uh, to, to to us that uh, she has migraine and she has cluster head pain uh, and, and 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 even pulsato uh, have some positive effect on her so yeah it's it's really nice i mentioned a few moments ago that the first motivation was your wife having cluster head pain what was your other motivation for taking such a deep dive in the field of sleep science that turned it into a career for you? I spent more than 10 years in sleep product industry. I was uh, working in different companies in different countries, uh, and always the sleep topic was near me. I also had some personal health issues, let's say, because uh, till, let's say, 30 years of old, I was super workaholic, you know, and I was this kind of person who always saying that, you know, you will sleep when you will, I don't know. <laughs> Then you go on, when you on, die. Yeah, yeah. When you die, or sleep is for weak, or something like that. You know, and I was working like a sixteen hours per day. You know, sleeping for five hours. You know, but uh, when I started to experiment with my sleep, I, I'm experimenting a lot still at this moment with sleep. I'm doing testing a lot of things. You know, maybe we can speak a little bit later about it. But when I started to experiment, I realized that how how better i can sleep you know how much better uh, you know i can sleep and how this can reflect to my let's say productivity to my energy levels to my sharper mind and etc and then i, I realized that this normal which i created like I'm, I'm sleeping normally it's it's nothing compared to how how better you can sleep and how it can you know help you to be more than better and better productive person in the next day well, I think there's a reason why you and I got connected. You know, I was very similar to you, and I would say I would sleep when I die and would do the 18, 20 hour day work days. Uh, and we'll touch on that, but you know, COVID certainly changed that for me, uh, reducing my my four hour day commute in and out of New York City. And, and let's talk more about sleep here. You know, you mentioned about you would you know work 18, 20 hours a day or more. Uh, we hear a lot of stories about people and often high achievers or geniuses like Elon Musk and Bill Gates, who supposedly only need three, four, five hours of sleep a night. Can people really function at a peak performance on a few hours of sleep every night, year in and year out? 
in the short term, yes. In the long term, no. I mean, it will be uh, sooner or later. It will be problems. Uh, you, you you don't need to look to Elon Musk. You, you can look to the Reagan, Thatcher. They they are officially uh, always were telling that you know they're sleeping like four hours. In the end of the day, they had dementia. <laughs> both both of them, Alzheimer's dementia. So I mean, th th there is some correlation in the long term, especially uh, about your health and 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 the duration of sleep. Uh, and the 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 issue is that you know it's like a, like a, I don't know uh, if you if you are in the room which is not very fresh air for you it seems that it's fresher you know and then somebody is coming and saying look can you open the window so you you're creating like a new normal state and for you you know five nights in a row with a bad night's sleep for five hours and you will be you will be saying that it's okay for you to, to sleep like this because you created like a new norm your new orange for you or something like that but uh, like i said uh, only when you are starting to sleep more and <laughs> sleep in better quality you're realizing how 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 far away you know i was from the let's say better rest and how this can reflect my let's say daily achievements and etc so to that point how much sleep do we really need Seven hours. I, adults, uh, if you are not a professional athlete, let's say, because if you're a professional athlete, you need at least one hour more. But let's say seven to eight hours. Seven is like a minimum. Uh, uh, if you're sleeping below, let's say uh, five, six hours is the threshold when you are really creating a damage. There are even very interesting analysis showing that only five nights in a row with, let's say, five, six hours of sleep, can a healthy person can create some already some pre-diabetes uh, or, or post level jumps to the pre-diabetes level. So it means that only five nights in a row of, of let's say those five, six hours of sleep and already healthy person can, can, can have some kind of not healthy person parameters like, like a glucose, let's say, increasement and et cetera. So seven hours is, is, is okay. Uh, still, uh, duration is not, not a main factor. I mean, still the quality of sleep is also important. So, for example, I know if you freeze, you will go 3 a.m. today, you will go to sleep, but you will sleep eight hours, yeah. Uh, will you be better sleeper than me who will go to let's say 10 p.m yeah but i will wake up after seven, six and a half hours so uh, quality is also very important here yeah? uh, uh, so if you are not reaching those seven hours of duration then please take care of quality and quality topic is wider topic so we can also discuss about quality later on so to your point about getting five or six hours of sleep during the week can we catch up on it over the weekend you know, is, is that a good idea for us to do? Unfortunately, not. Uh, consistency is very important, uh, but of course, it's better if you're, let's say, sleeping. Uh, b better to catch with power naps. It's a better strategy. Let's say thirty minutes, twenty minutes of power nap. It's better, uh, better way than let's say to to sleep. I don't know nine or ten hours during the weekend and try to compensate with what you didn't got on the work days. Uh, but still, uh, it's even better than not to sleep to seven hours. Let's say if you're sleeping on the work days five hours, then okay, it's 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 still it's better than nothing to sleep on Saturday. Let's say a little bit longer, like a one or two hour additionally. You talked about quality of sleep. What are the stages yeah. of sleep, and what happens during each stage? There are several stages, but I want to emphasize on, on, on two of them. Uh, one is deep sleep. Uh, uh, during deep sleep, you are getting uh, physical recovery. Uh, so uh, everything that is related to the physical stuff, you know, for example, hormones are some hormones are released, uh, glucose are regulated or some toxins are removed. So, so or tissues are regeneration. So everything that is re related with the physical recovery. So this is deep sleep stage. And then uh, other very important sleep stage is REM sleep stage or rapid eye movement stage, the stage when you are blinking very fast, the stage when you are a little bit paralyzed, the stage basically when you are dreaming. So this stage is responsible for emotional recovery. So for example, there are also some evidence that if you have some depression, you, you, you have lack of REM stage. So in theory, uh, best quality would be to spend at least 50% of time of total duration in those two stages together. So for example, if you're sleeping seven hours, it would be perfect to spend three and a half in total in REM, in rapid eye movement plus deep st sleep stage. My friends and my listeners know that I'm an Apple product junkie. Uh, and in particular, you know, my Apple Watch, you know, the smartwatch. 
Yeah. And we've seen the last couple of iterations come out with increased uh, health things. I'll say that they're tracking on there, yeah. heart rate, oxygen level, there's yeah. been a big, big focus on sleep. Yeah. Do you think that these are gimmicks? Are they worthwhile? Um, it does track how deep your sleep is and how long you've got you slept at night. It's showing the trends. Uh, you, 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 what you need to understand, I'm also using uh, a music aura uh, ring. It's other device. But uh, what you need to understand that uh, in order to track uh, REM or deep sleep, uh, tracker must connect to your brains because it's related with the brain. So, I mean, there are no tracker in the world. I mean, commercial tracker who is doing this. So all trackers have errors. For example, Aura Ring admits this. They are saying, yes, we are not tracking the brain waves, but we are tracking heart rate variability. And based on heart rate variability, we are guessing, we are making like algorithm in which stage you are. Yeah. So they have like an error, but this error is like a smaller. What trackers do good, they can track duration quite good. So when you went to sleep, when you woke up, so this is good. But for sure, this is not a medical diagnosis. So if, especially if you have like, a, I don't know, some insomnia or some sleep problems, you don't need to trust your tracker as a, as a doctor, you know, who, who said, you know, that you are a bad sleeper, you know. So this, but, but, but some trends you can see, some trends you can see if you're like a, collecting this data for a couple of years, you can see your, let's say, increased decrease of, of, of those stages, which I mean, relative is quite correct data. I mean, in, in, in the long term, let's say in the trend area. And do our sleep patterns affect how resilient we are or aren't in terms of our mental and emotional wellness? Yeah, yeah. like I said, REM sleep, this rapid eye movement state, uh, the rapid eye movement sleep is responsible for emotional recovery. And um, basically what it means that if you have lack of this stage, you are more you lack of patience, you are more abusive, you have this more abusive behavior and etc. It was even one very interesting uh, study published in uh, Harvard Business Review, which showed that uh, those managers, those leaders who have lack of sleep, especially REM sleep, they're bad bosses because because they have like a, those more abusive behavior. That's why the relationship with the subordinates are, are decreasing. That's why the engagement level is decreasing and etc. So it's like a direct correlation between number of, of uh, rapid of movement uh, stage and, and your emotional, let's say, uh, being and, and your, let's say, relationship with, with others. When it comes to sleep, we hear a lot about melatonin. Yeah. What's so special about our melatonin and why is it important to maintain our melatonin levels? I mean, it's uh, one of the main hormones uh, which regulates your circadian rhythm or is biological clock. And basically it's participating in the sleep, uh, uh, in, in the sleep duration and sleep quality. So yeah, it's, it's a very important uh, thing. Uh, important thing that melatonin produces during the evening hours. Basically, it depends a little bit on seasonality, depends on your endocrine system health, but basically it produces uh, around 9, 9 p.m., uh, 10 p.m. And uh, he has two enemies. One of them is light. So whenever brain receives the light, they are stopping for some time of uh, production of melatonin. And the other, other, other enemy is uh, cortisol or stress. So more stress you have in the evening, the less melatonin you, you produce. So basically, if you want to optimize your quality of sleep, you need to work on those strategies, you know, to, to, to deal with those two enemies, with, uh, with the cortisol and, and with, uh, with the light. And how do we make sure we have the right melatonin balance? Uh, so, yeah, if, for example, two hours before bed, you are uh, switching off or minimizing at least the light sources, it's for sure it's a very, very uh, good strategy. Uh, there are some articles uh, which saying that you need to consume some food. For example, pistachios, they have like a lot of melatonin. But even in my experiments, you know, what I found that there are some game changers and not game changers. For example, I calculated that you need to eat 400 grams of pistachios, 400 grams, which is already impossible, yeah? <laughs> in order to produce, in order to produce 25% of melatonin, which you can produce organically. So better is to, let's say, two hours before sleep to cut the lights. It will make bigger effect than 400 grams of, 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 of uh, pistachios. So you need to focus on game changers. And one of the biggest game changers for sure is the light control. So even now, for example, I'm speaking, I'm trying to minimize the light. Uh, yes, the screen is creating the light, but, but I have like a screen darker on my, on my uh, laptop. And, uh, you know, I'm surrounded basically in some kind of dark mode, you know, Oh, no lights because it's evening right now in Lithuania. It's 8 p.m. 
So we shouldn't check our email or social media when we go to bed at 11 o'clock at night? I mean, it, it would be perfect, but at least what you need to do, you need to put the blue light filters on your phones, on your uh, screen uh, computers. Computers have the softwares like Iris, like like Flux, uh, uh, which basically do uh, very simple stuff. When the sun goes down, the screen becomes darker. On the iPhones, uh, uh, or, or let's say on Android phones, there are these blue light filters, sunset to sunrise, uh, uh, which basically does the same, you know, uh, the screen becoming dark. It's better than nothing. It's better than, than nothing. But for sure, if you will, let's say, skip your phone for two hours before bed, it will make better, let's say, uh, more, more, let's say, uh, effect, uh, you know, than, than with this dark screen, dark uh, screeners. And I'm afraid to ask the next question just because we shared a little bit about it before the show. What are your rules on caffeine when it comes to getting good sleep? Uh, unfortunately for the <laughs> caffeine lovers, it's a um, very bad thing for, for, for the sleep. There are a bunch of meta-analyses, which means a lot of studies, a lot of data which showing that caffeine is not a friend, uh, basically, uh, and it's decreased deep sleep by around 15, 20%. You remember deep sleep is responsible for uh, physical recovery. So the last coffee, it's let's say after lunch because caffeine um, uh, they uh, stays in the body around 10, 12 hours. There are some specific people who have some specific gene which uh, absorb caffeine faster, let's say, but uh, you never know. <laughs> do you have this gene or no? You can do some gene tests, but I mean, still, let's say, if you have some issues with sleep, like insomnia or whatever, I'm really recommending to cut caffeine. I mean, more in the morning, caffeine is very good due to a lot of reasons. Uh, but let's say if you have issues with the sleep, really try to cut caffeine. You can replace the caffeine with other stuff, even tea, or, uh, which still has caffeine, but small, much smaller amounts, and etc. The problem is that caffeine, like sugar, is everywhere. For example, if you're going to the gym you, and you're taking like a pre-workout, you know, the, those, the, those drinks uh, for energy, they usually have a lot of caffeine. If you're a lover of, of dark chocolate, you know, you, you, you can get a lot of caffeine in dark chocolate. I mean, it's, it's like sugar and, 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 and salt. Everywhere is the caffeine in the, in the, in the products. Yeah. So this is sort of the, the chicken or the egg question, I'll call it. Does our body crave or need caffeine precisely because we aren't getting enough sleep and we need to keep us awake at work? Or the opposite, are we not getting enough sleep because we insist on having too much caffeine? Exactly, it's like a closed cycle. You know, you need you need caffeine. You see, first in, in first week, you, you see that I need one cup a cup of coffee in the morning. Then you know I already need two cup of coffees because I, I I feel I don't feel a lot of energy. And then you see after one month that you already addicted to all, you know three cup of coffee because without this you know you can do nothing and etc. So uh, yeah, this this is like a closed cycle and. Um, Sometimes we believe that we are not uh, addicted to caffeine and we can do, uh, we can work without him and etc. Try, try just in the morning not, not to consume coffee. And <laughs> can you do it? So not so many people can do, you know, without, without coffee, be energetic, you know, and, and, and uh, work productive. How does when we eat, what we eat, or how much we eat influence or affect our sleep? There is some, some for sure effect, but like I said, uh, mm, with eating, you know, we have a lot of not game changing stuff like pistachios or walnuts or banana or eat cherries. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's good products, but still, you know, there are some more, more, let's say, uh, influencers of, 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 of good sleep. But in general, there are some rules. I mean, some basic rules, like not to overeat uh, too much. Yeah, like not to drink so much in the evening because you will go to the toilets. You don't to, to eat uh, too heavy food, uh, spicy food, uh, and etc. cetera. Uh, if you want uh, more, let's say, specific things. So, for example, Turkey is very good uh, food because in Turkey you have uh, you have some uh, amino acids, which is very important to produce of, of production of, of, of melatonin. Uh, food with nitrate oxide is very good. So, for example, beetroot or, or some kind of green leaves, because nitrate oxide is creating some kind of uh, blood circulation and uh, drop down your temperature. And it's very important for the 
for the sleep and etc. So there are some specific food, but but like I said, the main rules are not to overeat, not to 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 not too much of heavy food, spicy food, and not, not so many, let's say, uh, drinks. Where does exercise fit into the overall equation of healthy sleep? Very good, uh, uh, and one of the let's say I have routine by the way uh, before sleep, uh, some specific routine. I have like a 10, 3, 2, 1. It's like a 10 hours, 3 hours, 2, and 1. And one of the elements of this routine is um, 3 hours before sleep to, to do some exercise. Don't need to run marathon. You can walk for 30 minutes. It, it, it's, it's enough. But basically, the, the basic principle is that more active you was during the day, more, you know, probability of, 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 of better sleep, you know. So... So this is like a basic principle. Uh, there are some arguments about do, let's say, too heavy sport in the evening can can create like a, a bad sleep, but there is no like evidence and meta-analysis that's showing that, let's say, too much cardio can negatively affect your, your sleep. So sport in general is good because it's creating, uh, let's say, uh, fatigue and... and, and um, that's why you have probability to sleep better. And do older adults experience more sleep problems or need more or less sleep? Yeah, because it's related with melatonin production because older you are, uh, lower amount of melatonin you are producing. Um, this is probably one of the main reasons why uh, for older people, um, even doctors are recommending to use uh, synthetic melatonin you know, tablets or, or pills or whatever. So, but this is the main reason, uh, and, and that's why the duration of sleep and the quality of sleep are, are, you know, decreasing because of melatonin. Before the break, we were talking about potential sleep problems. Sleep issues like sleep apnea can be fatal. What should we do to make sure we don't have a potentially dangerous condition such as sleep apnea? Yeah, there are some conditions where still there are not so many solutions like snoring, apnea, uh, Parents sleep if you have small babies and etc. Night employees, night shifters. So yeah, apnea is quite quite terrible condition. Uh, I mean, there are some uh, risk factors. Uh, for example, uh, body weight. Uh, so usually people with obesity they have bigger chance to. So you need to control your your let's say behaviors, especially related with food. Uh, men's uh, unfortunately have bigger risk of, 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 of apnea and snoring. Snoring is also one of the risk factors. So uh, what you really can do, you can try to control snoring. Uh, not so easy to control snoring, but there are some solutions. For example, mouth taping, it's a very simple solution. <laughs> really, believe me. Uh, even for those who, who, who are not snoring, but still, you know, a lot of men are, are, are breathing through the mouth during the, during the uh, sleep. So the mouth impact is really, really nice solution, you know, and uh, it's decreasing the snoring in, in, in some cases, not in all cases, but in some cases. Well, according to my wife, I allegedly snore at night, uh, but I'm going to make sure she's not listening to this show because next thing you know, she'll put a piece of tape over my mouth. So I'm not sure uh, I want to do that, that going that far for us. <laughs> <laughs> But you so, can try it. But you can try it. By the way, I have this mouth types that sometimes I'm using. I'm not. I'm not snoring, but sometimes I'm using it uh, because uh, it's those. Those you see that those uh, they are covering the part mm -hmm. of the lips, not like uh, directly, but like a part. Of, and psychologically, it's more easier to put this kind of uh, you know stuff on you on you. And uh, it's it's a one of the for me. It's a one of the biggest. Let's say. Uh, small hacks what i can do in order to sleep better because i really feel more rested uh, it's uh, related with oxygen you know you're just if you're uh, breathing through the mouth uh, through the through the nose during the sleep you are getting more oxygen and more oxygen you are getting more refreshed you are in the in the, in the morning so this is like a very simple Take the you know the hack what what i am doing personally not always but like uh, several times per per week you know I think my wife would go right for the old fashioned, you know, silver duct tape and just wrap it around a few yeah. times and make sure I couldn't yeah. talk. <laughs> you, can, you can do also this. So we know that sleep problems can kill us, but can quality sleep prolong our lives? Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially uh, we talked 
uh, about productivity, without ener about energy, and etc. But uh, health and and sleep, it's it's very related, you know. Uh, especially in these uh, things like glucose regulation, and you know that diabetes was one of the biggest uh, deaths in in in, in uh, let's say in in the world. Uh, so you can really minimize risk of diabetes if you're sleep sleeping quite well and etc. Uh, inflammations uh, and your immunity system it's it's also very related with sleep. And you know, especially now in this pandemic uh, environment, it's uh, very important for for us to have strong immunity. And there are a lot of a lot of let's say touch points with the health, uh, hormone production and, 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 and tissue regeneration, etc. So for sure, if you sum up all of those uh, let's say health reasons, you can really uh, give 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 yourself bigger probability of longevity. And sleep is one of the longevity tools. You know, so it's like. A, you know, always when you're speaking with longevity, those guys who are like biohackers in longevity field, they're always saying start from the basics. So basically sleep, water and, and breathing. So those are three basic elements. Usually they're free of charge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's just, I mean, in majority of cases, we are forgetting how to do them right. You know? So that's why we need consultants. We need some kind of keep it simple, experts and, and, and et cetera, you know. <laughs> So I read that you conducted a 200-night experiment to test various sleep hacks described in scientific articles. Maybe first describe what a hack is. You mentioned the tape a minute ago. And how many hacks did you test and how did you choose the ones that you tested? Yeah, the idea was very simple. I took like a 70 things, 70 factors, which has some kind of scientific articles or whatever. And I tried one thing or one factor three evenings in a row. And I measured everything with my... Uh, ring the order ring like i said there are some errors in the measurement but still you know it, it was not like a scientific experiment it was my experiment so i saw some kind of trend some kind of trend mark uh, and, and etc so i remember i started everything from kiwi because there are some articles which saying that if you're eating kiwi before sleep the the fruit uh, kiwi mm -hmm. you are like uh, improving your sleep world don't ask me why but there are some reason behind so i ate kiwi for three evenings in a row and just and just you know check it how it's improving or, or decreasing my my sleep quality so during those 200 nights i tested like a 70 things like like kiwi it was a lot of strange things <laughs> to some of them my wife looked very strange because for example i covered my my bedroom with some flowers three nights in a row because there are some kind of flowers specific which are cleaning air and this is how you're improving the sleep i was consuming coffee in, in the big amounts i was consuming alcohol i was listening white noises uh, those you know psh, psh sounds you know I, I i i bought some infrared lamps i mean so so a lot of things related with food with with supplements with bedroom with uh, body uh, changes and etc so this was, let's say, my experiment. And based on this experiment, I, I created some kind of, uh, let's say, presentation. And, and this presentation, I'm really speaking a lot uh, in Lithuania, in, 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 in some conferences, in, 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 in companies, educating about the importance of sleep, how you can improve your sleep, and etc. So, yeah, so this was my, 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 my idea. And did it take 200 nights because of the large number of sleep methods you were testing? Or to require that number of days because you wanted to thoroughly test each hack for a long time. Yeah, I wanted to to test uh, each hack because in in the end of the experiment, I remember I repeated some of the hacks because I wanted to prove myself is it really working, uh, and uh, and yeah, because some of them was really really strange for me that something is working. You know, I didn't expect it so 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 much from something and uh, and. But the, the main lesson was that, like I said previously, that uh, there are a lot of not game changers, which are like a good, let's say, uh, flowers yeah, <laughs> in the bedroom. Yeah, they are maybe good, but they will not improve your, your sleep quality like dramatically. Yeah? Or, or I don't know, or those pistachios or, 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 or whatever, you know. But there are very important things, you know. Uh, five seven very important things and not only for me but they also have a, like a huge amount of proof scientific proof so they have like a, on meta-analysis level a huge amount of proof so you know then you basically my my lesson that you need to focus on those game changers those like uh, main things you know uh yeah i'm sure the new zealand kiwi farmers are happy to hear you talk about having kiwi at night so uh 
hopefully we'll be exporting a few more of those. Before we talk about neuromodulation, what are the best hacks for improving our sleep and how do we get beyond good sleep to achieve high quality sleep? Yes. So like I said, I have this routine, 10, 3, 2, 1, a very simple routine where I put all those main game changers, let's say, in this routine. So 10 hours before sleep, you're cutting alcohol and coffee. Basically, I mean, it means that you're not consuming alcohol at all. Theoretically, you can still consume in the morning, but let's be serious. (laughs) That's a different issue. (laughs) Yeah, don't consume alcohol. And let's say the last coffee, let's say 10 hours before sleep. Then three hours before sleep, some physical activity uh, and, and and some kind of uh, dinner, uh, like we spoke, you know, uh, not heavy, not spicy, etc. Then two hours before sleep, very important is to cut the lights, uh, to minimize the lights, or sometimes we are, with my wife even cutting at all the lights, you know, for, for one, let's say, week, evening per week. And then you are uh, taking care of your bedroom. So it means that you are really making the bedroom very dark. So no, some lights, uh, uh, curtains, very important role has you now in this. In, and you are uh, decreasing the, the temperature. 18 degrees, 18 Celsius degrees is very, very perfect temperature. And then one hour before sleep, you're doing some stress management exercise. Doesn't matter. Or you're doing some breathing exercise. So you're meditating doesn't matter, like a five, 10 minutes of stress redu- uh, activities, stress uh, decreasement. So this is like a most important things to know when, when we are spo- when, when we speak about uh, sleep and this, those are game changers. I'm not doing it every day, but I am, for example, when the next day is very important, I'm usually switching on this routine uh, during the, that, that evening. So for example, uh, uh monday will be very important day because i have a lot of meetings a lot of i need my energy level you know on top level till the end of the of the day so on sunday for sure i will invest time in in, in this routine because i want to be let's say more productive during the monday Peak so this is my course. approach yeah this is my approach a moment ago i mentioned neuromodulation as a result of that experiment you invented a neuromodulation device pulsetto Let's talk about neuromodulation. You know, what's the history of it? Yeah, the history is quite, uh, quite. Uh, they have a lot of history. Basically, you know, modulation is already established market. There are a lot of big companies. Basically, the pioneers of neuromodulation is Medtronic. It's a very big U.S. company, uh, and they already in 1960s started to implant some devices which create some electric impulses and change, uh, change and changing the brain activity. So neuromodulation basically is changing your brain activity via uh, electric stimulation. It's not strong <laughs> electric stimulation. So sometimes, you know, people are a little bit afraid of this, but it's not strong, very specific based on some specific voltage, amplitude, pulse uh, weight, pulse width and, and, and etc. And uh, basically, this is very uh, good alternative for medical drugs in some cases because it's treating mental, very serious mental diseases. For example, like Parkinson, migraine, depression, epilepsy, those kind of uh, serious medical conditions. Uh, they have drugs, yeah, medical drugs, but in, in let's say one third of cases, those drugs are not working. Plus, drugs that have side effects, they have uh addiction problem especially in us you have a huge amount of addiction problem and etc so it must be some kind of other way and neuromodulation is other way it's also proposing the treatment of those serious mental condition in let's say in 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 better way because you don't have any side effects and any strong side effects and any any addiction let's say uh, and etc. And the market is already big. Uh, there are a lot of deep brain stimulators, uh, implants and not implants for treating uh, Parkinson tremors. There are a lot of spinal cord stimulators, very big market, uh, treating chronic diseases, uh, chronic pain uh, uh, problems. There are vagus nerve stimulators. Uh, also, the market which is in, in gastric stimulators, which is treating the gastric problem. So, the, the market is already established and it's quite, quite growing quite fast. Pulsetto is described as a revolutionary science device that activates your parasympathetic nervous system to reduce stress. Most of us understand the basics of our nervous system, but I doubt if many people have heard of the parasympathetic nervous system. What is it and how does it function and service within the parameters of overall nervous system? To simplify everything, you know, we have like a 
two very important uh, nervous system. We have autonomous uh, sympathetic, let's say, nervous system, which is fight and flight. So when you need to focus, when you need, you know, motivation, when you need, you know, to prove yourself, to do something, and etc. And then we have this parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. So everything slows down. Yeah. So for example, when you are sleeping, you are, you need to you need to to push on the, the the parasympathetic nervous system. The problem in the world that because of this super dynamic stress and etc. environment you are more on this sympathetic system of this fight and flight and you are not able, you are losing the capability to switch on the parasympathetic nervous system. So more tools, more, let's say, uh, practices you have in order to switch on the parasympathetic better for you. So meditation, mindfulness, some apps, some some music relaxation. So all or, or, or other, let's say, devices, they are all doing the same. They are trying to, to switch or you from from this fight and flight state to to rest and digest what and where is the vagus nerve and what does it do so the point is that uh, let's say the biggest factor of your parasympathetic nervous system is in, in vagus nerve why the vagus nerve you, you can imagine that the, the, the vagus nerve is like a highway between your brain and internal organ this nerve is unique because it's one of the only one nerves who have like uh, branches in all organs. So all organs have some branches and communication between the brain and the organs exist through this, uh, through neur neurons who are going through the, through this nerve. So for example, uh, brains are receiving information about organ status. Let's say liver, they have like 500 functions. So brain receive information <laughs> about these functions are that they're working i mean status update from from vagus nerve and reverse communication also exists so for example brain sends the signal through the vagus nerve to heart rate that you need to reduce your your beats yeah you need to or or to let's say to, the, to reduce the blood pressure or 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 uh, release some bile, bile uh, for, uh, from pancreas and etc so uh, if you have damaged uh, vagus nerve you have some issues because you have issues with blood pressure you have issues with the heart uh, you have issues with the liver you have issues with with, with, with everything the good uh, point that you can stimulate you can activate you can work with the vagus nerve and by doing this you know you can uh, uh, let's say solve even uh, issues with, if, if you have let's say low vagus tone uh, low vagus level so you can let's say regenerate the vagus nerve by doing some specific things you know not only with pulsetto but with some breathing exercises also they are doing good job for the vagus nerve cold showers also doing good good stuff there are some uh, massage techniques and etc just in our case in pulsetto case we are doing it faster we are doing it in four six minutes for example humming by humming by this sound you also can activate the vagus nerve because vagus nerve is very active in the neck region so when you're humming you're like activating those let's say muscles and nerves but you need to hum 30 minutes in order to do to, to achieve something with pulsetto you can do it in four six minutes so we are like a saving the time for, for this so you've mentioned pulsetto a few times can you describe the pulsetto device and how did you create it and what does it do yeah, so basically pulsetto device is quite simple wearable device which you need to put on your neck like i don't know like headphones if you can imagine uh and then you need to switch on the one button and via mobile app you can choose the stimulation uh program and you can regulate the stimulation intensity we have let, let's say nine stimulation intensity levels number nine is very intensive but basically it's it's a it's a simple because uh it, those uh, electrodes they're touching neck region and i said that in the neck the vagus nerve is very very active and uh, we have a specific electric algorithm in 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 in, in these electrodes and based on the specific voltage and amplitude you know we're creating like uh this um, 
like a small needles, like tingling sensations. It's a, it's a very safe, uh, no side effects and etc. Very, let's say, small electric uh, stimulation signals, but it's enough to activate the, the, the nerve. And this, this is how we see that, let's say, heart rate is dropping after four or six minutes of stimulation. Uh, the heart rate variability is increasing. Now we see even the blood pressure is, is decreasing, but we need more data and that's why uh, we are planning to do, to do some clinical trial in the first quarter of next year regarding the blood pressure. So it's not only about relaxation. In theory, the uh, the vagus nerve stimulation can solve all, a lot of parasympathetic uh, system issues. Uh, even even your, let's say, gastric gut-brain axis, because this is also a very important role. Uh, the vagus nerve pre represents a very important role. So we want to spread, let's say, our... Uh, benefits of our device but for sure we need more more data and more studies um, about it is this something that would help high performing athletes before a sporting event uh with our device uh, maybe uh in case of recovery but still uh, not so many data about it but I know that some athletes they're using uh, a neuromodulation it means electric stimulation for the for the performance and basically they're using in two ways or they are doing for faster recovery for example they had very 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 tough i don't know competition or whatever the next day you know they're trying to reduce the muscle pain and etc or before competition for the muscle enhancement uh, for the let's say uh, stronger stronger muscles so there are like uh, two ways how the professional athletes and, and some of them very well-known professional athletes, for example, Tim O'Donnell, one of them, who is officially saying that he's using uh, neuromodulation as a tool uh, for, for recovery and for better performance. And the reason I ask is because when you put your device on, recently I've seen uh, several American football players wearing something similar around their neck during their warm-ups before a football game. And so I didn't know what it was. I thought it was some sort of a, I don't know if it was a sweatband or something. And, and just seeing your device, I thought maybe there's some American equivalent that they could be using. That's why I asked. It is different. I know what you mean. It's a different device for the different reasons. Uh, it's because of head traumas. Uh, it's reducing the head traumas. Uh, so it's totally cool. different technology because in American football, head traumas is a very like a, a very tough issue, Seriously. you know. And, yep. uh, yeah, and this this kind of device, they have some proof. I don't know exactly how they are doing, but I know that it's a quite similar looking device. Uh, but working on a different, let's say, technology to, to reduce the head traumas. That makes sense. Thank you. So you talked about electric stimulation a few times. How does that change behavior? So basically, it's like uh, in, in case of, uh, of the brain, it's, it's creating uh, the, new, uh, the new pathways of neurons. It's creating the, uh, even, even in some cases, it's, it's releasing some neurotransmitters. Uh, so, for example, in case of vagus nerve stimulation, it's uh, uh, releasing the ac acetylcholine, so one of the neurotransmitters which is responsible for the relaxation. And uh, basically, you can get this acetylcholine by medical, if you're using some medical drugs or some doping stuff, and etc. Or you can do it, let's say, legally and, and more organically. So basically, uh, like, like, like it is, or it's releasing some neurotransmitters like dopamine and and, and, and something like that. Or it's creating some new uh, neuron pathways, and then you know it's giving some signal to some, let's say, organ or some 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 body uh, uh, areas to to perform, let's say, uh, better or relax, and etc. We all experience stress now and then, but we ex explain what happens in our body to create stress. You know, what's the physiology of stress? Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately now everybody blames the stress you know and and uh, everybody says that stress is you know the main <laughs> the, the, the stress is the, the 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 most important factor why i didn't succeed you know or why i have some illness and etc uh, yeah there are a lot of stress let's say uh, types uh, but the most important is to have not to have this chronic stress when you are like in, in constant fatigue and and, and, and etc because it's creating other problems it's creating other diseases you know and etc 
so uh, there are some factors which can measure the stress for sure the cortisol one of the factors where you can measure the stress and hrv or this heart rate variability this is also other factor which basically represents how strong your parasympathetic nervous system or how strong your vagus nerve tone is so basically uh, this is one of the biggest factors where you can say uh, if, if if I'm looking to the heart rate variability data, I can say, do you have like a chronic stress or you, or you have like a severed stress or you have like a small, let's say, uh, stress and etc. So for me, this is one of the main, main, main uh, indicators. We have just two minutes left. Where can people learn more about Pulsetto, yourself and neuromodulation? At, at this moment, we still are in Indiegogo. We had a very uh, intensive campaign during December. So we can just insert Indiegogo uh, and Bulsetto. You can find uh, us for sure. We sold more than 700 uh, uh, devices already during the one month. And also we have our own uh, website where you can read more information. It's pulsetto.tech. Uh, so Pulsetto with two T. So Pulsetto with two T and dot tech. Uh, and yeah, and I'm quite active on LinkedIn and social media. So you always can find me uh, on, uh, here. You can always write me some questions. I'm really interested in uh, all possible longevity and biohacking uh, stuff. So for me, it's really uh, nice to meet some new and let's say uh, people who are have the same passion like 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 I have. So yeah, you can you can find me on on on, on the web for sure. Victorious Mayorvis. Thank you so much for being with us today and helping us end this year with such a fascinating, informative topic. Thank you, Grace. It was a big pleasure for me. Thanks. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this week's episode of Next Steps Forward. I'd like to give a very special thank you to all the talented people at the Voice America who make great conversations like today possible each week on the Empowerment Channel. I'm Chris Meek. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. I wish you all a very healthy and happy new year. Until then, stay safe and keep taking your next steps forward.